It is ridiculous. I live in a cycling paradise. I live in a running paradise. And I'm 38 years old. I've gone around the world with my sport and I'm trying to be level 47 on Zwift. There were a few parts of my first encounter on Zwift, which was, one was, was a serious road rage incident, which was not the funny part, um, but it's what made me decide to be indoors. And let's be honest, pre-Zwift riding indoors was just a pain. It was just something you had to do if it was raining and you'd sort of cut it short by half every time. And then I found out that I was already on Zwift. <laughs> I'd never heard about Zwift. And, and strangely enough, there was, somebody there riding in, in my name. I don't actually know if they were fast. I should have checked that out. I'm not a big fan of sharing data. I don't like it. Really? No. I think it's one of... It just like... Everybody does it. And I feel like if I go to a lawyer and I ask him to solve something for me, I don't want to know what books he's reading. I just mm. want to know that he solves the case. And the same I feel with an athlete. Like there's a, I feel there's merit to doing something without sharing everything. But everybody wants to see all the data, all the time. Do you miss your dog when you're away? Very much, very much. Mm. We read a book just before we had the first kid and in the book it said, you may not believe this right now, but at one stage you will love your child more than you love your dog. And I was like, what are you talking about? All right, Sebastian Hina, where are you? I shaved my legs last night for the first time this off season because I thought on camera I look like a douche. My legs look so white. <laughs> I grew up in an intellectual household, sports was never really a topic, but I always had a surplus of energy and I really needed to run and I, I was the first to do 50 laps around the sofa when I was four, four years old apparently. I always had that kind of drive and even though I came to sports very late. I grew up in Cape Town and learned to surf or bodyboard at the time in the gentler waters and took such a liking to it that then I started surfing more and more and the problem with that is that I couldn't swim. And so my mum was very eager to get me to swim classes uh, fast and, and that's exactly what happened. I went to swim classes and really found that competitive edge so quickly and, and could live out all my competitiveness all the time, every single day and every single rep that I loved it. And I was swimming within six months, I think I was swimming 10 times a week. And then eventually going to a swim squad that was led by a former competitive swimmer, old school Hungarian hard ass, and he formed me as an athlete and as a person. When I was younger, I was a terrible competitor because if I lost or was close to losing, I would simply lose everything, lose my shit completely. I would throw the board if it was a board game. It was apparently not fun to be with. I've reduced my competitiveness to being on the course. Just triathlon related, I'm actually quite happy to lose against my kids. I don't, I don't tackle my son before the goal. Dog sitting, baby sitting. I was on uh, breakfast duty this morning. It's cool, I like it. It's uh, not the youngest anymore, so. So your kids are giving you a new perspective on life. The most beautiful hobby in the world. The most beautiful secondary thing in the world. Whereas I used to think sport, and everything around it and me in sport is the pinnacle of life. <laughs> you learn to take yourself not quite that important, which is good. Also, to actually grow as an athlete. Almost 20 years of this. And that's 17, 17 years of the pro. I think my motivation has come down to, to finding a limit, to finding what's possible to looking where I can improve. I think happiness is closely correlated to, to improving. It always makes me feel like a little kid again because there's so many people in here riding so much better than I am. And I see fellow athletes on here just having ridiculous average speeds. And you can work out career average speeds too. Quite frankly, it's such a mind fuck. Because you're just working out, it's like this guy Done like 40k an hour over 20,000 kilometers or something like that. And here I am, just trying to get by, do my thing. So Nick moved to Girona within a week of me, and we met at the pool and started swimming and have been training together for five years now, which is a ridiculously long partnership in terms of like sports, endurance, together training. Like, I can't handle 
pretty much anyone else for more than three days. At first he didn't have a trainer so he came up to my house and we were sitting there in our little pain cave together. <laughs> my pain cave used to be all of eight square meters so it was a very saunery experience, not really the best thing. <laughs> He's probably not quite as addicted as I am, therefore our training outside has become, has suffered a little bit. I think he mentioned to me the other day that he rode 16 days consecutively on Swift and I was jaw dropped. I, <laughs> I hadn't seen him for so long, we didn't ride together and that's the reason he was just in the zone in his pain cave and 16 days. There's always something for incentive, you know, and that's, I think, something that makes a lot of endurance athletes tick. It's like, oh, I want that level. I pulled together my, my best string ever, which was 16 consecutive days. Um, again, because there is a badge for 14 days. Like, it's just, like, I look at it and I'm like, it's bad. But I love it. It's, um, it's, it really is just, you know, the easiness of it. I have a super busy life at the moment. I've got, you know, eight pots on the stove at the same time and it just allows me to get changed, get going, get done. Somehow allows me to be a kid, you know, on the on the Nintendo at home, but in my work. I've never checked how many riding ones again. 830. I'm sure Lionel gets thousands. Oh and I don't like that my avatar sucks at cornering. My avatar always goes the long way. Somebody has worth please look at my avatar. Short way, short way. Just take the inside line. I tend to practice a lot being in the here and now and so 2018 was a valuable experience because really I was at a point in my life where I was quite saturated in terms of sports challenges. I, I really felt that especially 2016, the year before, well two years before, I got somewhat lucky um, in, in terms of putting it all together. I, I was pretty carefree in my preparation, I did a million and one extra cur curricular activities that just really I felt like I didn't deserve the title that year and got it. And that sort of put me on the course of if I get one more I think I'm done. And that's where 2018 was definitely an eye-opener because I kind of got to see the race from the outside perspective and it made me realize that I'm definitely not re ready to hang up my shoes. And it was the first time that there was a bit of anger, I would say, in my, in my cocktail of emotions. And anger is a very powerful emotion if you can sort of direct it in a way, which is, which is not always easy. But I think I managed to do that very much so, and, and that really is what got me back on track for 2019. The big thing was just coming back after you know, a lot of doubt, obviously, especially when you have a stress fracture in, in, in your sacrum. You don't really know if your body holds up. It's, it's a major, major injury. And, and whether that hip will then hold up to carry you another four and a half thousand kilometers through a season of running is a question that's, you know, will only be answered on the day. I used Wift until probably like 10 days out um, before Kona. And yeah, I realized that putting uh, a kicker into the sunlight in Maui and turning off the fan and Zwifting for three hours is a very, very effective way to get heat acclimatized. It's also a very effective way of frying yourself. I really did feel like the years before I won because I was able to suffer more than anyone else. And, and I believe there's always that element in Kona, but it really did feel good at times, which I wasn't sure was possible in Kona. Content is a hard and a difficult place to be in. I think content is very much, it's a dangerous place to be because being content means that you stop looking for the edge. I'm not ready to settle down. You know, I might be the old guy on the circuit now, but I'm definitely, I'm hungry.